Yeah, I welcome everyone to the conclusive part of our February 2022 digital lectureship. As we all know, the theme for this month's lectureship is Jesus, the Savior. Jesus, the Savior. On Friday night, we had a keynote, which was Jesus and his encounter with the man who was possessed with, by demons in the country of the Gadarenes. Jesus' encounter with the Gadarene demoniac was our keynote. And one of the outstanding lessons we learned from that keynote is that the devil himself knows who Jesus is because even the demons confessed and said, we know who you are. You are the son of the most high God. And that is very, very outstanding. If Satan himself acknowledges Jesus as the son of the most high God, no human being has any reason to doubt the divinity of Jesus. And last night, we had a wonderful message, um, which was Jesus, the savior in the house of Zacchaeus of Jericho. And we have an amazing lesson. The conclusion of that lesson was that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Today, we are having our family and friends dinner. And the keynote for today is Jesus at a dinner party. We will be reading this story from the book of Luke chapter seven, taking the reading from verse 36 to verse 50. We'll be reading the scripture verse by verse. Jesus in a dinner party. We have a dinner party today, and I believe that Jesus is in our midst because he said, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am with them also. So I believe that Jesus is in our midst right now. But we want to take a journey to the ancient time, first century, when Jesus was a special guest of honor at a dinner party. So we take the reading from Luke chapter 7, verse 86. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. The first time I read this, that a Pharisee invited Jesus for a feast, for a dinner. I was thinking that the next verse will say, and Jesus refused to go. But that is not the case. We all know that the Pharisees were not friends of Jesus. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were the religious leaders of Jesus' time. And they were the people who distorted the word of God, who preached the word of God for their own selfish interests. They changed the scriptures. They upheld human traditions. They made void the word of God and held on to their own traditions. They were the people that Jesus one day said, these people draw nigh unto me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me because they teach for doctrine the commandment of men. The Pharisees were teaching for doctrine the commandment of men. And Jesus came to teach the true word of God. So they were never at ease with Jesus. These were the same people who were plotting to eliminate Jesus. They tried so many times to kill Jesus, but could not because it was not yet time for him to die. I still remember the time they gathered around him in the temple and wanted to arrest him and kill him. But the Bible says Jesus walked out of their midst without them knowing what was happening because it was not yet time. And the hatred that the Pharisees had for Jesus was so high to an extent that they said, when we kill Jesus this time around, we should kill Lazarus that he raised from the dead. They wanted to make sure that they killed Jesus and also eliminated his work so that there will be no remembrance of whatever work he came here to do. Now, you know 
that the Pharisees are your enemies and they are the same people inviting you for a feast. The Bible says, and Jesus went. Jesus honored the invitation and he was in the Pharisee's house and he sat down on the dining table. Verse 37 says, and behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Hey, another problem is coming, not that wahala. Yesterday, Jesus went to Jericho. Of all the good men of Jericho, of all the leaders of the synagogue, the religious leaders at Jericho, it was the house of Zacchaeus the sinner, the chief of the publicans, that Jesus had to stay, take a rest. And we all knew how it ended. Today, again, Jesus is in the house of the Pharisee who invited him for a dinner. And the Bible says, a woman in the city who was a sinner came. I believe that woman was not one of the invited guests. At that dinner, we had the special guest of honor, which was Jesus. At that dinner, we had the disciples of Jesus who were the invited guests. At that dinner, we had the host, Simon, the Pharisee, who invited Jesus for the feast. And I believe that there were other invited guests, like the chiefs and rulers of the land. They were all there. This woman came as an uninvited guest. And he intruded into the dinner party. But the woman did not come empty-handed. All the good people of that city came for the dinner without coming with anything. They came prepared to eat. But this woman came with something. An alabaster box of very expensive perfume. And she entered the dinner party. A woman that was known as a sinner in the city. If a woman is known as a sinner, our mind will always go to one direction. Because people often say that when the witch cry in the night and the child dies in the morning, we will all know what killed the child. Maybe the woman was a prostitute, just like the woman of Samaria. And she came to Jesus. And what did this woman do? And stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to watch his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kiss his feet, and anointed them with the oil men. This woman did something extraordinary. What other women did not do? The woman stood close to Jesus and was weeping, crying, and the tears flowed. The tears were enough to wash the feet of Jesus. And she even used her long hairs to clean the feet of Jesus. And then anointed the feet of Jesus with the expensive perfume. And even killed the feet of the Savior. Look at that kind of acceptance. This woman received Jesus wholeheartedly. And did not reserve her love for Jesus. And people were looking at what was going on. Now listen to me. I always like to tell people, whatever you don't understand, don't talk about it. Because you will make a mistake. People were wondering, what, what is this prostitute doing here? We will see the reaction of the man who invited Jesus for the dinner party. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. Look at what the host is reasoning. The man talked to himself. You know one thing? When you talk to yourself, no one else would hear what you have said, except you yourself, but it's a third party. Anytime you talk to yourself, Someone is listening and someone is hearing you and that is God. When I talk to myself about you, you will not hear what I'm saying to myself about you. But God would hear it. When you talk to yourself about anyone else, no one else is hearing what you are saying, but God is hearing you. I remember the man who talked to himself about himself. The man who said, although I am a very wicked man and I do not have 
compassion on people. Let me help this woman. We know that story. He talked to himself. We also know of a man that talked to himself about himself. The man who said, ah, I don't have the strength to, 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 to do manual work. Now that my master is rejecting me, what will I do? I am lazy. He acknowledged he was lazy. He talked to himself about himself. But most times, a lot of people do not like to talk to themselves about themselves. They talk to themselves about others. Out of suspicion. So the Pharisee who invited Jesus was reasoning and was talking to himself. So, uh, if this man that I invited to come to my house and eat were a prophet, he would have known the manner of woman that is touching him now. Perhaps he reasoned within himself and pondered and thought whether Jesus invited his girlfriend to come to the party also. Because they did not like Jesus. There's no name they would not call him. They were the ones who told Jesus one day and said, didn't we tell you that you are, Sam you are a Samaritan and that you are mad? They were the ones who told Jesus one day, are you not possessed by demons? And Belzebub. If they will call Jesus a demon, what will stop them from calling Jesus a prostitute? A harlot. A threat. So he was not thinking good about Jesus. Why did he invite Jesus to come and eat in his house in the first place? Was it out of love? No. He didn't like Jesus. The Pharisees never liked Jesus. I believe that he had a secret agenda. And Jesus knew his heart and had to honor that invitation. So he talked to himself and said all bad things about Jesus to himself. Verse 40. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon. <laughs> the first time I read this, I thought Jesus was talking with Simon Peter. Because at that time, I did not know that the name of the Pharisee who invited him to the dinner was Simon. So at this point, Jesus knew what he was talking to himself about. And he called him and said, Simon, come, my host. My old God that invited me to come and eat in his house. Come, I want to have a discussion with you. I have someone to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. Jesus said, before we eat, I want to have a discussion with you. And Jesus said, I mean, the, and he said, go on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. Jesus started the story. He said there was a, a businessman and he had two persons who were owing him money. One owed him $50,000. The other one owed him $500,000. And then Jesus went on to say, and when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him the most? The man that owed 50, let me say $50, and the one that owed $500,000. Which one would love the man the most? Because two of them didn't have the money to pay. And the man said, okay, well, I have seen that you cannot pay this money. We call that in business, bad debt. The debt you know, someone will not be able to pay you. So you cancel it and call it bad debt. The, the, the master said, forget about the debt. I don't want you to pay again. I have forgiven you. Go on with your life. And he asked him, of the two people who will love the master the most, let me see the answer that he gives. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. Simon said, the one that owed $500,000 will be so happy and would love the man so much for it. And Jesus said, that is the right answer. You know it. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? At that point, Jesus turned to the woman and called the attention of Simon to the woman and said, have you seen this woman standing here? And then Jesus said, 
I entered into thy house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in had not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman had anointed my feet with ointment. Good. I remember that when I was in the Bible college, we studied the Jewish hospitality. How a Jew would entertain you when you visit his house. We were taught that when you visit the house of a Jew, the first thing he would do for you is to give you water to wash your feet. You know, they wore sandals and they were walking on the desert road. So your feet would be dusty. The first thing the host would do is to give you water to wash your feet. And then he will give you a towel to dry up. He will give you an oil. You know, when you are washing your feet, you wash your hand and you wash your face. And even your head. So the host will give you oil for you to rub on your feet and hand, your face and your head. That's what the host will do first. But Simon did never did any of those things to Jesus. Because he did not invite Jesus for a dinner out of love. He never did any of those things. And Jesus said, when I came to your house, you refused to receive me the way a Jew should receive his guest. And now see this woman. This woman never stopped using the tears from her eyes to wash my feet. And use the hairs to dry up my feet. And never stop anointing my feet with the expensive ointment. And even kiss my feet ever since I entered here. Wherefore, I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is given, the same loveth little. To so Simon, that was a very crazy thought and idea. Of all the people at that feast, Jesus decided to forgive a sinner, forgive someone of sin, and it was that woman, the woman everybody knew was a notorious sinner. Jesus said, see this woman, all of her sins are forgiven because she lost much. She has heart of love, heart of forgiveness, heart of compassion. This woman is forgiven. And they that sat at meet with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? Do you see? Do you not see that they did not invite Jesus for a dinner because they loved him? They did not invite Jesus to the dinner because they wanted to hear him preach. So when Jesus said, the sins of this woman are forgiven, the Bible says other people, the other Pharisees in the house, now started to talk to themselves and said, who is this one that forgives him? Meaning that they had not accepted that Jesus is the son of God. They never accepted that. They never believed in Jesus. They were not prepared to obey him. They talked to themselves about Jesus. They could not voice it out. If someone does not have anything good to say about you, he will not say it to your own hearing. They talked to themselves and they gave themselves the wrong information about Jesus. And verse 50, and he said to the woman, thy faith had saved thee. Go in peace. Woman, your faith has saved you. What actually happened here? Why was this woman crying? The woman was crying because she realized her mistakes, her sins, and she repented. That woman showed remorse. That woman was very, very sorry for the kind of sinful life she was living. And that is what Jesus is expecting from all of us. We need to show remorse. We need to admit that we have made mistakes in our lives and we should be ready to change. That was why the woman was crying. It was a sign of repentance and Jesus forgave her. Remember once again, he came to seek and to save the lost. The woman was lost in sin. Maybe someone dragged that woman into prostitution. 
And now the woman had an encounter with Jesus and there had to be a change. And the woman was ready to make that change. Today we have the world full of such women and men. Men who have been dragged into all the nonsense we have in the world today. Most of our youths are being recruited into armed robbery gangs, secret societies, different secret cults. People are being misled on a daily basis to the wrong religion, to denominational churches where they are being lied to, where they do not hear the truth. There is need for them to come back to Jesus and hear the truth. Take note, these were the people who were preaching at the synagogues and the temple. Why were they preaching to people if they were against the teachings of Jesus? They were not preaching the truth. Just as we are hearing prosperity theology from different pulpits today, and all they emphasize is sowing seed, that you need to sow seed, give the key to your new car to the pastor, and become a millionaire. That's what people want to hear. The next thing is for them to prophesy, to let you know that all your relatives are witches and wizards. They are bad people. You should not give them your money. Mind you, these were the people who help you to go to school. They will tell you that your mother is a witch, your father is a wizard. The same man that, 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 that used his sweat to send you to school so that all your money will go to the pastor and the, 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 the wife of the pastor. People are hearing different things today. And the Bible says the preaching of the demons. Paul told Timothy, he told Titus, he told Titus in Titus chapter 2, verse 1, and said, Teach what befits sound doctrine. Don't teach error. We need to be prepared to know what to teach. The Bible says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And before you arrive there, you need to study and understand. Study to show yourself approved unto God as a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We need to settle down and study the scripture and know the truth so that we are telling people the truth. Today we have had that story about Jesus being at a dinner party in the house of Simon the Pharisee. And we have heard of the woman that was a sinner and she was forgiven. And that woman turned a new leaf. The Bible says, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things are, all things are passed away and all things are new. I believe that we have people in this audience today who would like to renew their lives by giving their life to Jesus Christ. My prayer today is that this message will sink into the bottom of our heart and cause us to see the reason why we should give our lives to Jesus. May God bless us with this message in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That has been the conclusive part of our digital lectureship for the month of February. The next keynote we'll be listening to will be the sermon from Brother Noah Whitlock, the preacher of the College Church of Christ in Sesi, Arkansas. Until that time, I invite our song leader to come and help us sing some songs, and let's see if we can connect with the college church. Thank you, and God bless you.